Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at IG Delft Institute for Water Education. In a previous video, you've seen how to make a catchment map using the print layout in QGIS. In version 3.14 Pi, there are some new features that I'm going to demonstrate, plus some little extras. First of all, there are some more styles for the skill bar. So here you see the default, and in the item properties, there are now a few more styles you can choose from such as the stepped line or hollow. Here I will use the stepped line. Sometimes I see the wrong scale bar that belongs to the locator map. So it's important that you choose the correct map, which is the main map. So we have the scale bar for the main map. Now let's improve the legend. Since QGIS 3.14, we can use custom legend patches. Go to the main QGIS screen. There I go to the style manager using that icon. And in the style manager you can find the legend patch shapes. Now it's empty, but I'm going to import style patches. So I go to import items and you can use a file or a URL. In this case I'm going to use a URL. Here you find the link that I'll also put in the description. I go to the class Carlson patches XML file, I click on raw and then I copy the URL. Back in QGIS I paste the URL and I click fetch items and there we see those nice patches that were prepared uh, by class Carlson. I click do not import embedded tags and then I click select all and import and there's one with the same name, but I'll just overwrite it. And there we see all those uh, patches and there's some nice ones for uh, our rivers. I click close and there I double click on stream order. And there I click on the shape under the patch uh, part. And there I switch to all legend patch shapes. I'm going to choose river one. Now this style, you see it already in the result, is applied to our stream order legend. That's very nice. And it looks now more like rivers. So we're going to do something similar for the Ruhr catchment, but we want uh, first some more space there and I do that by switching off the split layer so it gets its own space for the root catchment. So I'll go back to the main QGIS screen and I make sure that I choose the catchment boundary, the one with the only the boundary color and I am going to select the polygon and I click this button to copy the features. Then I go to the style manager and I go to the legend patch shapes and switch to all so we can see them all. And I click the plus button and we're going to add our own custom fill legend patch shape. So we've copied the shape and I simply paste it in here. So remove what was there and we need to add it a little bit because we don't need that first line. So delete it and also the empty space. And then also everything that comes after the last bracket needs to be removed. We want to preserve the aspect ratio and then you click OK. And then you have to give this new patch uh, a name. Let's call it catchment. And we can uh, change the tag. Let's call it hydrology. And you can add it to the favorites or just save it. And then it's added. Here we see our nice work catchment shape as a legend patch. So I click close. I'm going to unselect and I move back to my print layout. Now back in the print layout, we double click on the work catchment and we click on the shape. And there we're going to find it under the all legend patch shapes. And there's our catchment patch and you see it's now applied in the legend but it doesn't look good yet so we're going to improve the size a little bit 
First I'm going to switch off the background so we can uh, use the space more efficiently. And now we're going to change the size of the patch. And the height needs to be changed, let's say 30 units. And let's uh, finalize that footer part of the map by putting everything in the right place. And that looks great. The last thing I want to show is how to add the elevation uh, ramp as a legend, uh, but then with the minimum and maximum value automatically calculated. So I'm going to add a rectangle. I'm going to change the size, width of 5 and the height of 50. Let's zoom in a bit so we can see what we do. And click on style and then I go to simple fill and I want a, a gradient fill. So I'm going to change it to a gradient fill and then choose the same color ramp as the map. And this one here comes from CPT City. And then under topography, it's the elevation. There it is. Uh, now it looks nicer if you have a little box around it. And we could do that by having a simple line, but we can also make it a little bit darker because we have blended the colors and uh, I'm going to give the box a little bit of gray a transparent color to make it a little bit darker. So let's uh, start with black and then change it a little bit to gray and change the uh, opacity. That's a bit of tweaking so it matches slightly darker colors that we have in the map because of the blending. Okay, that looks better. Now we need to uh, add some uh, text to the legend. First, it needs to be clear that this is the elevation. So I type elevation. And now let's add the minimum and maximum value to the right of the ramp. And we're going to get that from the raster statistics. So under rasters, you find raster statistic, and that's the function that we're going to use. And under map layers, you can find the DEM. So when I double click, we get the, the DEM object there filled in, in a way that uh, the expression is recognized. Now go back to raster statistics to see how the syntax works and we need to add uh, the band number and the property that we want to calculate. Let's start with uh, the minimum. So we add band number one and we use the string min for calculating the minimum. And we see there that it gives nine, that's the minimum value. And we also want the units, very important to always add the units. So we concatenate the units to it and now we see nine meters so that looks good click OK and now we have the nine meters let's copy this one because we're going to do a similar trick for the maximum value put it there make sure that they are aligned and I simply have to change min to max to get the maximum and there it is so now we have automatically Calculate the minimum and maximum value of our color ramp. Let's do some finishing touches. Uh, let's put a frame around the inset map, the locator map. And you see it blocks some uh, legends there. So I'm going to change that. But in our case, map one uh, should not obstruct the legends of the cities and the towns. And now we can export the file to a PNG or to a PDF. I hope this video was useful. 
please subscribe to my YouTube channel to get updates. For more free materials, have a look at gisopencourseware.org.